I tell you, I am darn near giddy to talk about this game right here. Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time. Let's get into it. Everybody. Welcome back to the Dice Odyssey. I'm Koss, and today I'm going to be bringing to you a pre-production preview of a game that I am ridiculously excited to talk about, Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. Now, Lucky Duck Games is actually bringing this game, which is an adaptation of the video game by Ironhide Studios, uh, to the board game realm from the video game realm, which is kind of nice. If you don't know anything about the Kingdom Rush series, let me just give you a little recap. Kingdom Rush was released by Ironhide Studios in 2011. If you found a tablet or a phone, you could play it on there. And it's basically a tower defense game, but at its heart, it is a pop culture nerd's dream come true. Because you're not only putting towers up everywhere in the video game, uh, once you start creating them, you start hearing movie quotes from all over the place that you're going to recognize from movies. And as you try to, you know, destroy the horde that is coming at you, the onslaught of different kinds of enemies. I've been an avid fan of the video game. I've been playing it for years. And now they've actually decided to bring this to board game form, and that's why I'm so excited about it. That obviously says that I have a bias towards the thing. I admit it, okay? But does that make a fun game? I'm gonna give you a general brief overview of how the game is played. Now keep in mind, everything is fi not final copy, it's all pre-production, so that means rules, uh, components, everything is subject to change. But let's get right into it, and then we're gonna talk about the end part. In Kingdom Rush, the kingdom is being besieged by hordes and hordes of enemies that are running along a path trying to make their way towards the kingdom to destroy it. Your job as Lord Protector of the Kingdom is to smite thy foe with a wide assortment of weapons towers Reinforce! and mighty heroes at your command. You will be cooperating with other players to rain down death and fire and send them packing back to the desolate wasteland from whence they came. A sword day, a red day. Now to start with, each player is going to take a hero. You will also gain different types of towers in the game to start with, and you're always going to start with level one towers. You will set up the board according to whatever the scenario says, and you'll have seven hearts at the exit. Your goal is to survive the onslaught of minions that are going to move along the path and ultimately destroy the time portals through which they are spawning. Once you have destroyed all the time portals in the game, you have won the game. Now when you attack, your main objective is to try to cover up as many enemies as you possibly can. Once you've covered up all the enemies, they are now considered destroyed. You have a multitude of phases in the game, and we'll just go through each one of those quickly. Each player is cooperating at the table to try to take down each tile as they go through. Players can only attack from their own build spots on the board. So let's say, for example, this player has a tower, which is the archer tower, and they lay it down, and they can orient it any way they like, but as you can see, it's got the double arrows, which means it can attack this tile or even the one next to it. Now, if it only had one set of arrows, it would only attack the one it was next to. So it can now do damage to either one of these, and you lay the damage on the tile to try to cover up as many minions as you can. In this phase, you could also activate your hero if you'd like. Your hero can be moved all over the board, as well as cover up minions which will help effectively slow them down or even kill them. Players have an assortment of different towers they can use and even upgrade as they go. Let's take a look at those towers now. You have the archer, Archers ready. which be upgraded into a marksman, Dodge this, and even upgraded into a sharpshooter. And as you notice, it's got levels one, two, and three on it, and it gives you different shapes and pieces as you go and each tower is going to work this way and now you've also got the mage which can be upgraded to the adept Might and magic which can be upgraded then into the wizard the wizard is never late now the militia are a little different than everything else for the king charge but they can actually be used to slow down or stop completely the minion tiles from advancing. Have that day. And then you have your bombard, which can be upgraded into an artillery, Fully loaded. which can then be upgraded into a howitzer. Hail to the king, baby. Now each one of these also has a fourth level that they can be upgraded to. Now as you notice, as you upgrade any of these, they're going to gain more power and more abilities. 
For example, with some of these others, you see different kinds of arrows that allow you to target not only what's in front of them, but also even what's to the side of them. Normally when you're attacking an enemy, you cannot change the direction of your damage shot. But if you actually upgrade your towers, some of them are going to have this symbol on here that has all these different arrows that allows you to turn that damage into whichever direction you'd like. Now to upgrade your towers, you'd pass a tower that you're not going to use this round to the player on your left. And they put it into the received tower slot. And later on in the round, they'll go ahead and actually trade that in for the next level tower. Now if any of these trays have been fully covered up with damage or knights, then that tile is destroyed and you gain the gems that are located on the back. These gems can be used later on for purchasing new towers. All level ones though. Now we go ahead and advance horde trays. Now this horde tray would only advance one normally, but this tray here has wolves on it that have this symbol that allow them to move twice. Now there are rules in the game that we're not gonna talk about here that actually deal with what happens if another tray blocks another one from moving, do you skip it, do you jump over it, all of those kinds of things. Also don't forget when advancing horde trays, if they pass the exit marker, any of them that are left uncovered will cause you to lose one heart for each. So in this case, we had two, so we lose two hearts. And also, militia will slow down or stop them, depending on what you have on the tray. But if they're still on the board and they advance, the militia gets destroyed. Now phase four is spawning new horde trays. And you put the new tray on the board. Now if you happen to draw a portal, remember the portals are the ones you have to destroy to actually win the game. Most of the time on these cards, you're gonna have different kinds of enemies that cannot be attacked with certain kinds of weapons. For example, there's some that cannot be attacked with magic, so you'll have to use different kinds of towers. Now in the middle of the tray, it's gonna show the portal. It's also gonna show the level of tower you need to defeat this tile. Phase five is the upgrading received tower cards. Phase six, you go ahead and pick up any tower cards that you have played on the board. And the last phase is buy tower cards and hero abilities. Now you can use the gemstones to go ahead and purchase any level one tower cards you want. You can also upgrade your hero with different kinds of abilities. And that in general is how you're gonna play Kingdom Rush. Let's get back to my final thoughts. Just because I'm a fan does not mean that I'm gonna automatically like this just because they slapped the Kingdom Rush uh, series label on there, okay? So did it meet my expectations? absolutely and even surpass them and let me explain why while my expectations were high they were also tempered because i understand you can't it's it's ridiculously hard to translate video game to board game format and you know vice versa it's like it's like going from you know the lord of the rings books to the big screen they capture the spirit but they didn't capture everything that you necessarily got out of the books i mean there's just a lot of lore there in the same way i feel like they did the same thing in many ways with this. Lucky Duck Games has captured the spirit of Kingdom Rush, the video game, into the board game format, and they've done it in spades. And it's absolutely, absolutely addictive and fun. I, I wasn't sure they were gonna be able to pull this off very well, but the one thing I loved about it was the amount of discussion at the table of, oh my goodness, you've got this tower that has these kind of tetra, tetronomo, I think they're called, pieces that we have to use on these enemies coming out, and the enemies all have different you know, areas where they're gonna be on the little blocks. So you have to figure out how to fit those pieces in there to kill all the enemies before they hit your end goal. And the level of discussion was awesome. You know, the interaction was what I was looking for out of this. Because if you're going into a cooperative game, you want high interaction. The nice thing was that they put the damage pieces as Tetronimo pieces, and I love that because it really makes you start thinking strategically. Also, there's some tactical decisions as well. If you're not able to get one of the you know enemy blocks off the board before a new set of blocks come out. And there are some serious strategic decisions in, in deciding when you're gonna upgrade your towers, when you're gonna pass them to other people, and you might take a hit that turn. You may not get a ton to do that turn, but the fact is you're doing that for the greater good of the game. And the nice thing is, is if you actually have your heroes out there, 99.9% .9 of the time you still have something to do and I love that, okay? Even if I had to pass a tower to somebody and that might've been my only tower I had left and I wasn't truly getting a full turn, 
it still didn't matter to me because I was still heavily involved in the actual strategy of the game. How are we going to take these guys out? Oh my goodness, these, these are faster runners. we got to hurry before they get to the end. And I like that because it changes the variability up and you're never playing the same game twice, right? You could stack these. I mean, the scenarios give you the stacks, but truly you could make up your own game with all the different board pieces. You can make a massive board if you want to. And again, these are not necessarily in the, in the scenarios that we received, but I'm assuming they're going to make more scenarios as they go but you could make your own scenarios and i love that i love i actually for a prototype another thing i really love was the actual production quality even for a prototype it was familiarity in such a way that they gave you clever decisions to make as you went and as you're playing if you especially if you love the game typically you are completely immersed and i don't mean i don't mean this is like the most immersive like story game or anything like that because this is a little bit more abstract right you're just trying to figure out how to turn your pieces to figure out how to put this tetris puzzle together in a sense to kill all the enemies and make sure they don't take all your hearts away but the fact is they they captured that immersion because it's not just that i've got towers to shoot things with i can upgrade those towers and as i upgrade those towers they get stronger and you get more abilities and you have a natural sense of progression of the game and you also have to figure out when you're buying new towers who's going to get them because there's different places on the field you have to figure out who's got the best position to use that tower what's really funny is i played with people at the table only one of them had played kingdom rush out of the rest of us we had a four-player game going and half of us had played it and everybody was engaged the entire time and they were like okay we just did this scenario. we want to play the next scenario we were really excited to get back in because each scenario doesn't take that long and they say 60 to 90 minutes on the box typically i think that's because you're going scenario to scenario to scenario because you're having so much fun while you're doing it if you saw anything that you liked here if you have played Kingdom Rush, the video game, I understand you're not getting the exact same experience, okay? You have to understand that. It, it was impossible to capture that exact same experience, but they captured the spirit of the game. In my opinion, as a fan, I feel vindicated in getting this game. I want a copy of this game. So anyway, if you're a fan of the game, definitely check it out. Thank you so much again for watching Dice Odyssey. Have you played Kingdom Rush, the video game? Any iteration of it? What do you think of it? So anyway, thank you again. You have a blessed day and back this game and game away. This video is brought to you by Fallen Dominion Studios. Check out their website at fallendominionstudios.com.